Okay, good morning and good afternoon for those of you joining us uh, from Europe. Um, I want to give a warm welcome to uh, this uh, second Islanders at the Helm stakeholders meeting where we will receive updates and hear presentations by our recently hired researchers and um, have an opportunity to engage with all those uh, involved in this program. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Antonio Carmona Valles and I am the president of the University of St. Martin. Uh, and I am filling in for Francio Guadalupe of the University of Amsterdam and the Islanders at the Helm Research Program Chair, uh, who will join us a bit later as he had another appointment, uh, another very important appointment or meeting, um, which should end uh, soon, but he'll be joining us in a few. Uh, Co-chairing this program is Corinne Hoffman, professor of Caribbean archeology span at the Leiden University. Um, again, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Islanders at the Helm is a five-year research program funded by the Dutch Research Council, NVO, and hosted by Kai Telve in Leiden and the University of St. Martin. The program proposes to conduct research for uh, or on climate change challenges from multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary methods uh, with the purpose of co-creating sustainable solutions for our islands. Um, if we can move on to the program. Uh, first, uh, we will um, have an update uh, on Islanders at the Helm researchers, uh, and then we'll move on to the presentations um, by our uh, PhD candidates. Um, and then uh, at 11.25, where we hope uh, by 11.25, we'll have an introduction to um, new Islanders at the helm, uh, researchers. Um, most of these are postdoc researchers and one PhD candidate. Um, all of these will introduce themselves and also uh, the great work uh, that they are either doing or about to do. So um, if we could go on to the next slide. So our first um, PhD candidate, a PhD researcher is Harold Kelly from Aruba, um, who will be working on long-term evidence for social adaptations to climatic challenges within the Dutch Caribbean. He's working, he's uh, conducting this research in work package one, um, which uh, looks uh, to uh, past communities and traditional knowledge practices. Kelly, the floor is yours. Thank you, Antonio, for the introduction. Um, next slide, please. Um, yes, as Antonio said, I'm conducting research um, related to the long-term evidence for social adaptations to climatic challenges within the Dutch Caribbean. And since I'm based in Aruba, I'm, I'm, I'm also an archaeologist at the National Archaeological Museum of Aruba. I'll be um, focusing on the island of Aruba. Uh, next slide, please. So <clears throat> since I started in September, I have um, conducted research and also community engagement um, activities. Um, to reach my objective to identify, identify adaptation strategies to mitigate the effects of climatic changes and extreme weather events within the archaeological record of Aruba. I um, did research which focused on the island e ecosystem and biodiversity, um, such as climate, precipitation, water resources, landscape and soils and vegetation and plant foods, and how these are affected by threats such as drought, hurricanes and sea level rise. Um, aside from that, I also focused on the archaeological record, uh, where I focused on the land use and settlement um, location, um, water resources use and management, foodstuffs and shelter, and also how these are affected by the threats such as drought and hurricanes. Um, to get a better idea of how the, the natural system of Aruba um, was used or was um, um, used by the um, pre-contact people. I'm really now still focusing on the pre-contact period. After that, I'll be focusing on the post-contact period and how these um, the people that came from Europe um, exploited the, the island with different um, um, intentions and methods. Um, aside from doing um, this research, I also focused on um, field work, which was surveys, which were related to pre-contact use of caves for shelter and, and the identification of water management strategies at archaeological sites. Um, this was um, specifically done at uh, specific sites. Um, the caves for shelter was done at the site in Kanashito. 
and uh, the, the identification of water management strategies were done at two ceramic period um, um, sites to get an idea how the people manage um, with the scarce water resources on the island. Next slide, please. I also did several community engagement um, uh, workshops and events. Um, the first one was the follow-up stakeholders meeting where I invited some of the, where I invited people that participated in the initial meeting on the island and gave them a follow-up and um, how the project um, turned out and what what the their contribution of how they con their contribution shaped the project. Um, during this workshop, I also um, had the opportunity to ask their input where I had, um, um, uh, uh, say, a questionnaire, uh, which had questions relating to um, the experience of um, the participants of climate change and also the adaptations that they think that could be um, allevi alleviate these effects and also what science means for them. Um, this similar um, workshop I did with, um, uh, let's say, a younger group, um, eight to 12 years old um, kids. Um, at IU, and it was really this was really interesting because I got in, I got input from um, young young you could say young generation, and we also combined it with um, other activities. All these community and engagement activities were um, were supported by the staff and and colleagues of the Ar National Archaeological Museum, which really helped out in, in conducting these. Um, during the two um, national days. Uh, the Dia de Batico on January 25th and 18 March. I also did another um, community engagement um, um, activity, but in this case, it was individual answers. And it was really interesting because you get you got different segments of the populations. Um, you got youth, you got older people. So I got uh, more var uh, varied um, um, information. And we also did during the visit of TVSI in France, uh, we did a radio interview where um, Francio explained about the effects of the climatic changes and how it is going to affect the island. And I presented my research and how my research will be able to give information that is relevant for um, to contrast what um, we'll be experiencing in the future. Next slide, please. That was my presentation. Thank you for listening. Antonio, you're muted. Thank you very much, Harold. Um, uh, we'll move on directly uh, to PhD candidate Shirley Emanuelson from Curaçao, um, who will be uh, working on a visual ethnographic research on Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao within Work Package 2, uh, dealing with the arts and culture and the transmission of knowledge practices. Shirley, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um... Antonio and all who are present. Um, I'm very excited to kind of have these kind of small sessions as we move further into this project. Um, for as a little recap, uh, first slide, um, Emma. As you can hear, I have a bit of a flu. Excuse me about that. <laughs> So this is the, the pictures, um, uh, one of the pictures I so showed you all last time, which kind of sparked and initiated a conversation between us. And um, by doing this exercise, I was able to show you an example of certain methods I will be working with during my research, right? Oftentimes photographs and other visual mediums are being neglected, but they can help us to recognize and bring stories to the forefront. Um, uh, and um, information that is re relevant, so knowledge production, and will provide new insights that help create more awareness on, for instance, climate change challenges that we are facing today. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, um, as mentioned previously, I will conduct visual ethnographic research on the islands of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao, where I start with the premise. Um, next slide. All islanders had to endure the legacies of colonialism as being former colonies of the Netherlands. This research, therefore, acknowledges this and will delve into the fact that if one wants to study climate change challenges in the Dutch Caribbean, there is a longer trajectory where people did not only face natural disasters, but also economic and social repression, together termed as coloniality of disaster. Next slide. 
So my the title of my research is Biba Dushi Deng Mal Tempu, um, whereby I will find understandings of how on the ABC Islands, Islanders are appreciating and adapting to the coloniality of disaster. I am interested in knowledge practices and strategies that show how Islanders are living with the rest of the environment. Um, next slide. Here you see um, the Bibadushi as a um, generally yeah, known term that is being expressed loosely um, uh, on the streets, um, but also on t-shirts, uh, mugs. Um, and so one of um, the things I want to um, proceed with is to think about how people um, Biba, how people are living Dushi um, uh, as a translation. And what does mal tempo mean um, um, and all the meanings mal tempo can have? So I will study Biba Dushi Deng Mal Tempo through the lens of performance studies, focusing on tacit knowledge to offer an understanding of the intergenerational and cultural diverse ways islanders are appreciating and adapting. Um, so next slide. Um, and to give you a, a brief of updates on my activities, so um, Together as an artist and as part of another work, I'm also busy working on a photo exhibition with a team on sustainability. So for this exhibition that will be um, presented in the Rijksmuseum in the Netherlands, I visited all the six islands, um, whereby um, I had the opportunity to kind of revisit certain locations I already knew um, and kind of confirm certain thoughts that I'm preparing as I am um, I'm working on my first draft um, for, uh, for my eight month paper. Um, and together with this, uh, maybe it's good for um, everyone to know on each of the islands, there is also a campaign whereby the students, so uh, middle scholieren um, and high school students, they can compete with a photo competition by also sending in pictures. This means um, in the approach, I also made sure to kind of bring and include all six islands into this specific uh, mom moment. Um, and um, so what I, for the rest, for the ones that are interested um, um, on what I will be doing specifically, um, for sure, um, let me know via email address. Um, and um, as I will visit each island, of course, I will individually make, um, organize more sessions. Um, so that's a brief introdu um, introduction from my part. Thank you. Masha Danki Shareli. Um, just want to let everyone know that after these, uh, after the next uh, pitch, uh, we will have a brief Q and A session before we start our second part. Um, now I'd like to introduce um, Lisanne Charles. Lisanne Charles is uh, the University of St. Martin's first PhD researcher, and uh, she uh, is conducting research on uh, policy development and sustainable knowledge practices within Work Package 4 of the Islanders at the Helm Research Program, uh, entitled The Co-Creative Approach to Policy Development and Sustainable Knowledge Practices. Lisanne, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kamona Baez, and uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Um, as Dr. Kamona Baez said already, I am stationed at the University of St. Martin, and I plan to conduct my research on the SSS Islands, so St. Martin, St. Martin, St. Eustatius, primarily because I believe that while research in the Dutch Caribbean is on the rise, um, and especially by local scholars, more work needs to be done um, on these three islands. Also, as a child of these islands, so to speak, I want to see that um, these endeavors also bring the community together and sort of get them engaged with the work. Um, so the theme for my particular project is actually when islanders led slash lead. Um, and this speaks to the notion that Islanders for many years were actually already at the helm of the decision making, um, which um, impacted them and also charted their own paths and that there was a lot to learn from this period and from them. Um, as an update to my previous presentation at our last stakeholder meeting, 
I have been busy redefining and narrowing down my area of focus. I think if you guys remember from the last time, I'm very interested in lots and lots and lots of different areas. Um, that's just indicative actually of the way I am in general as an activist, as an artist. Um, and so as I've been reflecting on some of the suggestions and concerns that were expressed at the previous session, um, I incorporated those where and when possible into my research design, which I'm preparing for my eight month paper. Um, in light of all of that, I have shifted my research question and you can see it on this poster that I prepared and actually would have been great. Um, and I still hope to welcome the whole Islanders team to St. Martin and also have uh, local stakeholders come in and meet with us. So this poster was prepared um, with that in mind. Uh, so my first research question or my main research question is actually to what extent can local traditional knowledges, practices, inform policy development around hurricane preparedness and more specifically water, food, shelter, energy security on the islands of St. Martin, Seba, and St. Eustatius. My other three sub questions are actually more related to the aspect of community engagement and just uh, before the nature of time, if people are curious about them, you can always reach out to me. My email address is at the bottom of the poster and I would be more than willing to share that with you. Um, as a result of the adjustments that I've made to my uh, areas of uh, interest and also my research question, um, I have limited my units of analysis uh, to far less than what they were when I initially uh, uh, presented to you. And so I'm going to be focusing uh, right now on existing and developing policies around hurricane preparedness and also on the staff members from the various governments of Sable Center Stations and St. Martin who are busy working with them. And in addition, the execution agencies and then the persons and organizations who those persons uh, or those entities define, define in their definitions. Um, I'm also particularly interested in the roles that community councils, whether formal or informal, are currently playing and can play in policy development decision making processes. Um, it is still my aim to make this research project an effort that is centered on the vulnerable communities of the various islands and with which they can thoroughly engage. Uh, in addition, it is my aim to have my work informed primarily, though not exclusively, by scholars and theorists who have taken up or whose work aligns with decolonial feminist queer theory, which challenges us to revisit norms of assumptions, question and challenge structures of power and amplify voices, which would usually be left out of conversations. Um, with that in mind, in the past months, I have been busy with lots of reading and also pre-interview field work conversations with persons who have either reached out to me uh, subsequent to the last uh, stakeholders meeting or who I have reached out to. These conversations often feel like an ongoing extension actually of conversations that I've been having uh, in various capacities over the last 30 years. And I look forward to continuing them as I um, move forward with this project. Um, they've been extremely fruitful and I look forward to more conversation of this nature during the upcoming period. Again, if you want to have more information about uh, this research project, you can always reach me at uh, the email address on the poster. And I'm also here at USM for the most part, so I'm always willing and open to speak with you. And as we prepare more community sessions, um, I will definitely um, send that information out to all stakeholders. In addition, I will be at SMILE this weekend, this Saturday at 9.15. So if persons would like to come out and hear a fuller presentation, um, I will be doing that at the campus of USM. And I look forward to uh, interacting and engaging with anyone who uh, shows up then. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lisan. And uh, just a note on that, uh, for those um, who do not know, SMILE is the St. Martin Innovation Industries Link Up event. It's an annual event uh, where um, the St. Martin Hospitality Trade Association, uh, together with other partners, including the University of St. Martin, um, get together, invite um, dynamic speakers, um, and um, uh, once again, among them would be uh, Lisan Charles of Islanders at the helm. All of you who were invited uh, this morning or this afternoon, if you're joining from Europe, uh, are considered Islanders at the helm's societal partners. Um, that's why we call this a stakeholder meeting. We want to now open up uh, the floor for a brief, maybe 10 minute uh, Q&A session with uh, these first three researchers. Um, these are the first uh, researchers that were are hired by the Islanders at the Helm uh, program. Um, we're very um, happy and proud uh, to be working with them. 
Um, and um, yeah, let's open up the let's open up the floor. Please raise your hand uh, using the raise hand function, and I'll try to identify you over the span of these two screens. Not all at once. Mr. Kuwale from Stacia, correct? Muted. Please unmute your mic. Sorry about that. Yes, good morning, good day to everyone, good afternoon, what part of the world. Yes, I'm from St. Eustatia, so it's the kind of Kuwale. Um, my area of work is in the mental and um, addiction fields, psychiatry predominantly. And in relation to this developing process as we sit here and talk today, my great concern particularly goes into when we speak about sustainability, et cetera. I'm very much concerned about um, the sustainability aspect of our cultural heritage, so to speak, that for one. And um, when it comes to this, Cultural heritage in relation to environmental issues is very little being spoken about because if you look at Synthesis, which is a rich, very rich island in relation to our Dutch transatlantic um, slave trade and colonialism legacy, there is a lot of our ancestral heritage which has been eroded and continue to be eroded, for instance, by erosion. But not only that, um, also, I heard the lady from Curacao said, Mrs. Charlie, that uh, she used the terminology former colonies of the Dutch kingdom. And I'm very concerned about language at time because basically I don't consider these islands to be a former colony. We are still under Dutch domination in every aspect, social, economically, culturally. As a matter of fact, we can say since um, 2010, October 2010, during the transition, if we look at the developing influx and changing of our cultural heritage and historical way of life, you can speak about a classical form of um, cultural um, 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 cl ethnic cleansing, so to speak, when you look at how the Dutch are actually dominating our civilization and everything which has to do with our heritage has been destroyed gradually. Right now we're on St. Eustatius, we have a resort on this island which takes up an immense amount of area which destroy the um, environment totally for no particular reason. And we all consider this to be correlated with um, developing and development, which is not actually serving the purpose as, um, um, as our way of life has been. So my question here today, and another aspect which I am not hearing much in this discourse as well, is in relation to the eco and um, environmental issues which are playing out, which is climate change, et cetera, et cetera. The effect of all of these um, transpiring and, 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 and transformation in relation to some of these issues which I'm speaking about, I am not hearing anybody speak about the mental and psychological damage and effect on the communities. And I, I, I have a problem with that. So I would like to emphasize here today to the scientists that and all of the different latest hoppers that there need to be a more closer look at what all of these transformation process is doing to a community mentally, psychologically, and socially, and not to even to speak about economically as well. So um, I am missing that in that discourse predominantly. And like I said, I would like us to pay more attention to that. And I would hope that more um, social grassroots um, organizations, not predominantly only scientists and doctors. I have a problem with that as well. It's as if only doctors and scientists can talk about our communities, whereas 
we have a lot of local scientists and for instance, oral historian, our um, elderly people, which are not being spoken to. So these are some of the important aspects of this development process I would like to bring to the table. Thank you very much. In Thank you nutshell. very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kouvelet. Your comments are highly appreciated. Um, I would like to hand the floor over first to uh, Shareli Emanuelson, who uh, is working uh, with the cultural aspects and artistic aspects. Um, perhaps she may also have something to say about the psychological aspects. And then to uh, Lisan Charles, uh, who will be de dealing uh, directly with um, de dealing directly with uh, policy uh, and climate policy. Um, and thereafter, uh, Harold, if you have anything to say, more than welcome. Uh, Shareli? Yes, thank you, Antonio and Mr. Kouvelet. Um, thank you for your reaction and feedback. Um, first, I would like to um, emphasize how important this um, whole research group, Islanders at the Helm, is. I believe in Brickstones and the fact that this group exists and who is in it, who is part of it and how we want to go about things, each of us individual, individually, but also in collaboration with each other in, um, just um, indicates to me that there is hope. <laughs> so I would like to um, emphasize on that. And um, to come back to your uh, comment that um, you are worried or you're concerned on sustainability and an environmental um, erosion heritage that of course needs more attention. That's actually on each island. And just by doing this last trip, it has become um, even clearer that there are definitely so much similarities, even though that there is also a lot of progress and that each island in itself believes that um, they are the worst um, um, going about things, but there is definitely a span of, um, of similarities that are happening. And that is also what I try to portray in my photographs. Um, and the conversations, just having such a platform will address certain issues, but also um, certain, yeah, maybe um, um, inspiration of action, um, which normally would not be been the case at all. Um, and that also information leads to a better preparation of when um, the research um, with the community and with people, individuals really start. Um, for the part of um, the language that you mentioned, um, still a colony and not a former colony. Of course, um, as an islander, I'm, I'm, that's not new. Uh, the first time that I hear that, and I definitely take that into account. But maybe for this presentation, sometimes I have to make choices. And as I progress, I will surely reconsider sometimes how I phrase certain things or include be more inclusive in terms of that. Um, also, you mentioned um, developments not as a service to our way of living. I mean, our way of living um, um, in my work, at least, and because it has to do with the visuals, um, um, I do try to focus my, my lens as much as possible and to kind of offer a perspective or, or uh, um, a vision, a more clear vision or translation, if you will. Um, so I am busy on that and do take that into account. Um, and um, yeah, for the part of, part of mental health, I do want to state that um, I'm not um, on the island as of yet. So that is also something that if research uh, shows me that that is a concern in the individuals I speak to, the things that I run into, even though I may suspect that to be the case, that is something that can definitely arise. So. I mean, there's many conversations to be held and you pointing it out um, also in this meeting is very relevant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shareli. Lisan? Yes, yeah, so um, Mr. Kuvale, thank you for your comments. Um, and I want to actually start by saying that I don't actually approach this project um, as an academic. Um, I approach it um, as an, from an activist background, from an artist background and academia is going to inform those things. So I'm gonna bring it together uh, in a full package. In addition, 
I'm a great fan of oral history and I'm a great fan of sitting at the knee of our elders, so to speak, and learning from them. Um, this in part is why I've worked very uh, hard at my grandmother to uh, create two books, two memoirs of her work, and I'd love to do it with more people uh, on the island eventually. Um, and like you, I have concerns. You know, I'm from Sabo. I've seen the way Sabo has changed in the last uh, 10 years. Um, I've seen the, the good parts. I've seen the, the not so good parts. Um, and I think what is important is that we sit with those concerns and also that we engage with the communities about those concerns. And as it relates to um, hurricane preparedness and nat uh, national disaster management, you know, also what the community stances are on those preparations and those policies. So I wanted, I wanted to address that first. So to take into consideration the second part of your comment. And then going back to the issue of mental health, for me is of course of extreme importance when you brought it up at the last stakeholders meeting and also uh, the uh, Minister Plenipotentiary of St. Martin, I really took it into consideration and, and I didn't have it on my radar. I will uh, acknowledge that. And I, I really um, worked it into my um, reading, into my thoughts, so to speak. And, and that is an important part of the conversation I'm having already with people ab about the policies that exist and also the policies that they plan to develop. Um, and I'm going to definitely give that space uh, in the research. Um, so yeah, I, and, and it, one of the, the core things that came out of the, the statements that you made the last time was actually thinking about how the communities are impacted by the increase, um, the increasing um, differences in climate change, right, on the islands. And I've really been thinking about it, and it's definitely uh, an area that I will put a lot of attention into. So again, I want to um, say that your uh, statements are very valid. Um, I thank you for them, and it's definitely something I'm looking at for my work. Thank you very much, Lisan. I don't know, would, uh, Harold, would you like to? Uh... Yes, um, 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 as Lisan said, I'm, I have the same point of view. Um, first of all, I'm an islander of Aruba. And second of all, the, I do my research through an academic, I could say, um, source um, from a standpoint. But we we'll, all will be affected by these um, changes, so we have to take that in consideration. And one part of the community engagement um, activities that I do um, focuses on the experience of the people on climate change and how it affects them and how they think they can, um, what type of, um, you could say, adaptations or changes or um, 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 results they can have and also to get an idea of how they experience it. And it's also geared for different types of um, segments of the communities. So the part which um, will come after this will really focus on um, traditional knowledge practices that, that especially the older people or the people that say that have more um, knowledge about this way, I'll be interviewing them. So it's an aspect that I for sure take into account. And I think it's very important part of the research especially the question about science so um, to so I can have an idea of how the, the community sees science and how I can better um, gear my um, information to so it's relevant for them. So this is not just um, making something scientific and just um, let's say not taking in consideration how what it means for the community. So I'm really focused on about that. Um, so yes, yeah, that's it. Asha Danke, uh, Harold, and yeah. I, I would just like to, you know, emphasize that um, uh, at the heart of Islanders at the Helm is community engagement um, from the very beginning. Uh, when we first uh, did our tour, we went from island to island looking for societal partners for this research program, um, and this is a work in progress. And uh, once again, Mr. Coulier, your, your, your comments and your interventions are highly appreciated. Um, and they are having an impact uh, on, on, on the research that, uh, that we continue to develop here. Um, for the sake of time, uh, we're gonna go on to the second part uh, of the program. Um, and at the end of the program of today's uh, stakeholder meeting, we will have a larger Q&A session. Um, so I wanted to uh, introduce to you, uh, Dr. Jaime Pagan Jimenez, um, who is from Puerto Rico, uh, but he is now working uh, at uh, Leiden. 
and um, he will be conducting his uh, postdoc research on sowing sustainable food futures in the Dutch Caribbean. Uh, that again is within Work Package 1, just uh, like uh, Harold Kelly. Uh, work Package 1 is on resilient past communities and traditional knowledge practices. Jaime, the floor is yours. Hello, good day to everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Jaime Rafael Pagan Jimenez, uh, and I am also from the Caribbean community, specifically from Puerto Rico, uh, from where we have often lived parallel stories, very similar, I should say, sometimes interconnected with those of yours on these islands. For the past 22 years, I have been studying different historic and anthropological aspects of the interrelationships uh, between our pre-colonial ancestors in the Caribbean and their useful plants. These specific disciplinary tasks have a name in the academy, and it is what we have come to call paleoethnobotany. However, my life experiences with plants in the Caribbean go back further in time, since I was born and raised into a family of very small scale farmers from Puerto Rican central mountain range. So uh, for years, I have lived surrounded by uh, and in some way intertwined with some of the, uh, our useful plants, even here at Leiden. At the same time, uh, those plants and some of the many meanings they have had through the history of which uh, I am part also live in me. Uh, during the next four years, I will dedicate time, energy, and passion to the implementation of this research that I have titled Sowing Sustainable Food food futures in the Dutch Caribbean. As you can see in greater uh, detail on the poster, it is a study that primarily aims to harvest and then merge ancient Caribbean wisdom with current traditional and local knowledge related to, to plant-based food systems. On the one hand, and uh, by ancient Caribbean wisdom, I mean the knowledge we may gain through the study and interpretation of pre-colonial and other historical contexts through uh, archaeology and paleoethnobotany. I intend to employ different methods and analytical sources from paleoethnobotany, as you may see in the flowchart to the bottom left corner of uh, the poster, in order to release or unleash this ancient wisdom and better understand the ways people in the past procured and used food plants under different sociocultural and environmental scenarios in the Dutch Caribbean. On the other hand, I expect to help to unleash traditional local knowledge regarding food plants through close collaboration and partnership, mainly with farmers and other food plant producers, but also with other stakeholders associated in one way or another with food uh, plant production in the islands. The necessary information and main topics and issues to be considered here will be identified and then explored in depth by our partners and collaborators through a series of questionnaires, interviews, and lived experiences around their farming practices. I believe that this expected merge between ancient Caribbean wisdom and current traditional local knowledge which is also wisdom uh, around food plant systems will give uh, additional tools and choices to the inhabitants of the islands to confront present and future food challenges arising from increasing climate contingencies that threaten the economic stability of the region. This research has been designed for being methodologically robust by integrating key methods and approaches from different disciplinary and extra academic fields, while simultaneously producing usable knowledge that could be appropriated in many different ways by current inhabitants of the Dutch Caribbean to step into a future of more food sovereignty, but also toward your paths uh, in the islands uh, regarding these matters in your own terms. Uh, well, uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, Emma and Tibisai, will be sending to you uh, the poster you have uh, seen here by this means. Uh, perhaps maybe 
through the chat, uh, Emma, uh, if you decide, so that you can review in greater detail some of the things that I have commented on very briefly uh, here. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Jaime. And I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Jaime will begin um, his uh, work in the Caribbean next week. He will mm -hmm. be coming to St. Martin and to Seba, working mostly on Seba. We'll go on to our next postdoc researcher. And that is Dr. Case uh, Norin, um, who uh, is also working on work package one of resilient past communities and traditional knowledge practices. Um, Dr. Case Norin uh, will be looking specifically at climate and vegetation reconstruction for the insular Caribbean and identifying past human adaptation strategies to climate change. Case, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. So I will be part of uh, work package one. Uh, my name is Kees Noore. I'm a biologist. Um, I have some experience in the area. I, I lived for five years <coughs> in Europe and did my PhD research uh, in Mexico. Um, well, next slide, please. As Antonio mentioned, we will start uh, next week in uh, St. Martin and Saba. Um, for my research to, to reconstruct past climate and past vegetation, I use uh, sedimentary archives from uh, coastal lagoons. And here on this old map from St. Martin, you can the, see the coastal lagoons that we selected to recover uh, sediment cores to uh, study uh, past vegetation and climate. Um, and I will focus on, uh, uh, on the Paleopoxies that are indicated on the left side that, that are diatoms and pollen. The diatoms are small algae that well, are related with the lake uh, water quality, and the pollen that are produced by plants and will um, tell us what was growing in the past. Uh, next slide, please. Just to, sh to show you an example, uh, you can collect a small core, for example, here, a small a half a meter core from a lake in, in Mexico. And with some proxies, you can reconstruct uh, climate. It's showing on the right side. But for the last 120 years, you see a fluctuation in uh, wet and dry periods. And you can see that we experience a drying trend towards the present. But also, there are some distinct dry intervals in the past as well. Eh? In the the beginning of the 1900s was a very intense drought in Mexico. And so we can have also reconstruct these kinds of climate uh, changes uh, on the Caribbean islands. Next slide, please. And with looking at pollen, we can also identify what was wrong in the past. And also in the, maybe in identifying plants that were used by the, by the humans in the past. Eh? Yeah, I show you some examples uh, of plants from, uh, from Aruba and the Macapraim, and the Carbas de Mondi and the, the Maishi, for example. So you can find them in the, in the sediments. And you can uh, also date these sediments so you know what was growing in the past and how the people used the land in the past. Uh, next slide, please. And, and within work package one, we want to correlate these changes uh, with the archaeological record and the historical records. So, so how, how did people use the, the land in the past? And how did they adapt to the past uh, climate change? So that's a little bit the goal of uh, my uh, research. And well, so we will start in Cinema de Saba, but I also will uh, they uh, used the uh, coastal lagoons from the, from the ABC uh, islands. And so, no, well, I hope that I can answer uh, some of your questions. Uh, so thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Case, Case Norton.
Uh, I forgot to mention that case is also affiliated with the University of Utrecht. Next, we have uh, Dr. Sharissa Ranger, um, uh, who um, is uh, who will be working in uh, Work Package 2 or is working Work Package 2 in the Arts and Culture and the Transmission of Knowledge Practices. Um, title of her research project is Weathering and Starting Again, the Aesthetics of Climate in the Caribbean Islanders Music and Performance Art Practices. Um, Sharissa, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to start with playing a clip. Um, perhaps if TBSI can share a screen and play that clip. Yes, working on that now. Thank you. Welcome to CNC News. Can you hear I'm it? Serena Alexander, reporter from Senegal. Yeah. 2017 has been the most devastating hurricane season. Four major hurricanes have already turned here in the Atlantic. Let's move over to our next reporter, Kenio Batty, who was on the field in St. Martin. So my project holds the title Weathering and Starting Again, which is inspired by Kenyo Bali's um, song. Um, and it has a subtitle, The Aesthetics of Climate in Caribbean Islanders Music and Performance Art Practices. To be frightened, heartbroken, ecstatic, and mourning, Kenyo Bali's audiovisual work orients or conceptual thoughts and my thoughts on musical performance among other arts. It is a short-lived moment, Bahala Rosea, to take a breath that is not accompanied by constriction, to say we're going to make it and mean more than just rebuild, to sing that the love will help us make it, lyricism that brings breath. Examining the concept of weathering which describes the repetitive and ongoing experience of withstanding climate catastrophe, remaking and reinventing and inventing in its aftermath, I question how islanders, myself included, actually predicate our hopes towards survival and change herein and how we are ultimately mobilized towards action to make other possibilities. If we take Lord seriously, who says poetry is not a luxury, right, but a vital necessity for our existence, then in the face of the repeating aftermath, what kind of work can music and other performing arts do to aid in weathering, to intervene in its repetition? How does art practice help us to construct knowledge on adaptation? The project seeks to highlight the aesthetics of weathering and the forms they take on in the work of remaking, reinventing, and rebuilding, seeking to emphasize how action is mobilized through spoken word, song, dance, and performance. So I am interested here in how bodies resonate together, how a certain way of moving and 
playing as embraced and how that is undergirded by the drums and the bass as Aruban Calypsonian Anthony Gario emphasized. In the face of the imminent disaster that climate change presents, it is crucial that we imagine and create a rigorous epistemological stage and a skeletal architecture for weathering as both a concept and political measure that can offer an analytic for how islanders organize their political, cultural, and social lives. The aesthetic of this in ways of sounding out in languaging and dancing and performing must link to ongoing discussions in climate technology and economics that have been wielded to think through the imminent threat. In closing, there remains a lacuna in examining the role and usefulness of the creative arts in the Dutch Caribbean and people have been creating, which speaks to the very real ways that climate events impacts our lives, livingness and our livability. Music is particularly well suited to pose questions for the ways it brings people together connecting islanders to ongoing scientific debates in climate change in how we come to terms with experiences of loss and disruption. Engaged in a relational ethnography, this study is situated in the livingness of music practice, analyzing Dutch Caribbean music in relation to knowledge, emphasizing the importance of aesthetics in how we weather, how we repair repeatedly and sense ourselves, each other and our environment. We might learn herein how reparation can take place to inaugurate communities and form effective social and cultural infrastructure anew, even when economic and tangible infrastructure has been traumatically undone by climate events. This project emphasizes the ways music expands being thought, criticality, and pleasure as we weather together. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Charissa. I also forgot to mention that Charissa is a lecturer at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad uh, and Tobago. We'll move on to our next uh, researcher. And um, uh, this is uh, Aga Kuss. Aga is um, Islander at the Helms uh, newest PhD candidate um, who will be um, involved in work package three, building in and for extremes, co-developing, creating future-proof architecture within the Caribbean Windward Islands. Um, and uh, the title of her project is Community-Based Circular Design. Uh, Aga is a graduate of uh, TEU Delft and will be um, uh, conducting her PhD uh, researcher under the auspices of Kai Telve, TEU Delft, and USM, University of St. Martin. Aga, the floor is yours. Yes, hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for introducing me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, could I please have the first slide? Perfect, all right. Um, so yes, as Antonio introduced, I'm part of the Working Package Free, and my name is Aga Kus, and I'm working on community-based circular design. And next slide, please. So uh, every year between June and November, people from the Caribbean, perhaps also including yourself, experience extreme weather. So for six months, the Islanders, besides all of, all of the daily challenges, need to also cope with the heavy rainfall, strong wheels, and even a risk of devastating hurricane. So still on San Martin, we can see devastated homes without the rooftops and even piles of debris, which is a consequence of Irma, which happened five years ago in 2017. So according to the scientific data in the Caribbean region, on average, the hurricane happens every six years. And additionally, due to the climate change, the consequences of the storm can become more severe. And this includes also devastating the infrastructure, the services, but also the dwellings and the economical resources for many households. Um, next slide, please. So the impact of Irma on San Martin was devastating. The wind was going with the speed of 150 meters per hour, which is as fast as six times on the average cyclist in the Netherlands goes, which is very fast. And the hurricane destroyed almost 23,000 households. So out of every five houses, two of them were somehow destroyed. 
Some of them had just window shuttles because of the flying uh, shingles around. Some of them uh, had the rooftops blown away and some of them were completely torn apart. And here we are five years later. And despite the available resources and fossil programs, such as, for example, highly promoted Building Back Better initiative, the islands still suffer. And we can see the houses without the rooftop with the materials stuck next to them, ready to be used. But there is the lack of knowledge and the lack of skills on how those dwellings should be rebuilt and who is supposed to do it for them. So how can we assist the islanders in creating what a resilient, sustainable house independently? Next slide, please. All right. So. Uh, in my project, I try to prioritize safety and comfort, on, and comfort of people, trying to consider both the strong winds, which may happen on the island, and also the temperatures, which can uh, reach also the level of 35 or 37 degrees. And those qualities, together with um, developing and improving the existing housing towards the wind resilience and also the weather resilience, along with development of skills of people who could potentially repair their houses themselves can lead us to a better housing solutions. And to achieve this goal, I would like to work together with local craft people and the local communities to develop a skill set together, to have a participation of house owners who are going to work with the communities to learn how to improve their houses, but also how to rebuild them in case of the minor fixes which needs to be done. Uh, additionally, I will be working with the principals to reduce the impact of the imported materials. So I will be using um, circular economy basics, including local crafts, as well as low-tech solutions and resources which are already available on San Martin and maybe are not being used yet. All right, um, and this process I hope it's going to help the communities to prepare for the extreme increasing for extreme weather, increasing also the sense of the ownership of the people and the feeling of the community. It also helps to spread the awareness about the, the hurricane resistant reconstruction and also help the people to independently assist themselves and their neighbors in the rebuilding projects. Additionally, um, working with the circular principles should help to be more sustainable in the way of helping the environment, but also try to reduce the prices of the solutions aiming at the low income people on the islands. And in the end, creating a self-reliant communities on the island. And thank you. I think there is uh, one last slide. Yes, so thank you everyone. Uh, if you have uh, any questions or ideas, um, please reach out to me or yes, we can have also a discussion later. Thank you very much, Aga. Indeed, we will have a Q&A session following this. Uh, the next and last presenter is Dr. Dafina Misijan, uh, who is a lecturer at uh, the um, University of uh, Rotterdam University, sorry, Erasmus University, Rotterdam, uh, ISS, that is the Institute for Social Studies uh, in The Hague, and um, uh, Dafina will be, is working on work in work package three, building in for extreme, co-developing, creating future-proof architecture with the Caribbean Windward Islands, um, and the title of her research project is Human Right to Water and Climate Justice in the Caribbean Parts of the Kingdom. Dafina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm last, so I hope that I can uh, keep your attention a little bit. Um, but yes, my name is Dafina Misijan, and I will be looking at two specific points um, for my research. I'll be looking at the human rights of water and at climate justice. Um, could I have the next slide? Um, so my background is actually a legal background, so I don't really have a lot of um, experience with other methods in social sciences. But um, I look mostly at regulations and how the legal construct either facilitates um, sustainability and climate justice or how it, how it can actually be complicit in um, taking uh, certain 
advantage of certain situations. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. My previous work has been on uh, the human right to water in the context of Suriname, also relating it to uh, water management. Next slide. So the first topic for me would be the human right to water in Sintostatius. Um, I came across this topic um, actually during the COVID period or the beginning of the COVID period when it became clear that there were a lot of households that didn't have access to, uh, to water. Um, and I started to think who is actually responsible for this, what are the reasons behind this, and how can this be resolved. Um, so that will be one of the topics that I will be looking at because in relation to this, as um, Stacia is now considered to be part of the Dutch Caribbean, um, there is an issue there when it comes to responsibilities and who needs to take up um, the infrastructure, but also how that infrastructure is made um, and how local, um, local, the local environment is considered in relation to this. Um, so some of the challenges here is that there are requirements, for instance, for the building of infrastructure um, to prioritize um, Dutch builders instead of local builders, which then um, kind of inhab inhabit uh, or inhibit um, sustainable construction of the infrastructure. Uh, but I'm very much interested to see how um, we can resolve this and how the legal um, framework should be constructed to make this um, to make access to water more accessible and also more uh, sustainable. Uh, next slide. The next topic um, that I came across was actually in relation to uh, Urgenda, which is the, um, the notorious uh, and groundbreaking uh, case where it was confirmed that the state has obligations towards its citizens to uh, limit the amount of CO2 emissions. Uh, in order to prevent extreme um, weather experiences from uh, climate change. Um, when that case actually came about, I was very much interested in that use of the word citizen and how this case related to citizens, but not necessarily to all citizens. Um, if you would read it, you would see that the Supreme Court actually really talks about um, citizens within the European uh, territory and not, not necessarily um, those within the um, Caribbean islands. Um, so I would like to look at this um, at whether or not there is climate justice for those uh, in the um, on the Caribbean islands and how that is constructed. One of the things that I'm looking at is, for instance, whether or not the climate change agreements are um, applicable for the uh, Caribbean islands. And so far, I've seen that they are actually not which interferes with access to uh, climate finance. It also um, kind of prevents a certain green transitioning that can take place. Um, but it also puts um, some light on what type of responsibilities, again, are there. So those are uh, some of the things that I will be looking into during my research. I'll go to the next slide. Um, I will be in St. Martin and Stacia in July. And here are also my contact details if you uh, are interested in my research or if you have anything uh, to contribute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dafina. Um, so there we have it. We have uh, three, uh, or sorry, three. We have eight researchers uh, who have presented uh, today. Um, for those of you who have joined us late or are here with us for the first time, once again, this is the second uh, stakeholder meeting uh, for the Islanders at the Helm Research Project. Um, we have researchers from different islands working on different themes. All of them are engaging the community and looking to see how science can inform our options for sustainable solutions uh, to deal with climate change challenges. Um, so uh, what I would like to do now is hand the floor over uh, to the research program chair, Dr. Francio Guadalupe, who will also uh, carry on with the Q&A session. Francio? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for being here. It's, it's nice to see that so many people came out uh, for these presentations. I have only two slides to just put these things together. Let me just say two things beforehand. Aesthetics matters. 
So you have seen various formats. Uh, it should be one format. And for that, our apologies, we will make sure that in the future, you have one format within all the, the presentations. The second thing to say is that there is a researcher that did not present today, but he is part of the Islanders at the Helm uh, research team, which is Gregory Richardson. Uh, he's here um, and we're working on, on the, the, the particulars, but he will be part of the Islanders at the Helm uh, program. Uh, Emma, can you just show two slides so I can put all these things together? And then briefly, uh, I think you have to click. Keep clicking, yeah. So one of, just to, because I don't know if that was said because I, I came in late, uh, that the Islanders at the Helm, the program, uh, and if you note, it is a navigational metaphor. So at the Helm. So it starts with the recognition that we are not talking about autochthony. We are not talking about people that came from the soil. We are recognizing that the six islands uh, were inhabited by people who came with various ships. Some came uh, willingly and others came unwillingly or their ancestors came unwillingly, but everyone came from somewhere. Even the Amer Indians came with the, with the canoes and ships to these islands. The goats came here. So we recognize that and we recognize also that uh, what people did on these islands and are still doing is trying to make it a sanctuary. Uh, there's sacraments, there's everyday sacraments such as what people say on these islands, moro bon dia or good morning. It's about wishing the other a good morning but also hoping that the morning will be good. So we take that seriously. It's about the land and about the people. Next one. Briefly, <clears throat> so we're looking at various expressions of life and that is what brings these various work packages and these various disciplines together. So there is the enabling life, which Agakus just spoke about. There will be another research in water management and the enabling life is all the things that people build. So the housing with the water uh, to actually and food ways to actually live a life. And that's what she's going to be researching from Delft University. There's the extra modern life, so how does the earth speak back to you? How is the past constantly speaking? And that's what um, uh, Harold and uh, Jaime and Case were speaking about in their different uh, technical things. They're looking at what, how is the past still speaking in the, in the present? Uh, the next one, there's a creolizing life, which is was what Sharelli and, um, and Sharisa spoke about the life of today. And that means we cannot only speak about the people who had been there longer, but we need to recognize that on an island like St. Martin, 80% of the population are newcomers. On an island like Aruba, it's becoming 50% of the population. So when we speak about heritage, we need to recognize that we're speaking plural. There's various cultural heritages on the islands in which people are trying to work it out. And that's what we're studying, the traditional and the many contemporary ones that have come in. Uh, last one, and of course, the governing of life. And that Davina and Lizanne nicely um, uh, presented on the political science, the development studies, the human rights, and so forth. Um, and then the last slide, so I hope that shows how it fits together. Then there is, of course, the outcome. And this was a question of, will it only be about science? Yes, it will be about science too but science which will enable uh, and try to uh, work towards strengthening the, the knowledge infrastructure on the island so that the various universities that are in the Dutch Caribbean, but also in the wider Caribbean can work together. Therefore, Sharissa from the UE, someone from the University of Puerto Rico, uh, the University of the US Virgin Islands is part of this, work together and the outcome should be a jointly operated center, research center, that does applied and uh, maybe more fundamental research on sustainable forms of development that benefits the islanders. And again, the islands, the land, the many critters that are there and the human beings, one uh, complex whole. So that's what Islanders at the Helm is about. And the many parts that you heard is about this. So now I'm going to stop. You can stop the slide sharing and then we can see uh, Q&A and questions. Yeah. Someone has a phone on. I think it's Claudia. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. 
Let's do it like. So I would say, don't be bashful, just ask a question. Mr. Kuvale, I see you wanted to ask a question again. Please. Thank you, um, Brother Francio. Um, well, I'll, I'll try to be brief, but there's more than one question. I would like to go back to Dr. Jemmy, our brother from Puerto Rico. And I would like to ask him because he went, something which struck me, particularly coming from him, is our ancestors' heritage he was speaking about. And I would like to know how do Dr. Jeremy see the correlation between both practices pertaining to archaeology in relation to our ancestors' preservation, for, for instance? Because I need to say I'm on this um, in this setting right now, but I'm pretty much involved with the excavation issues on St. Eustatius when it comes to archaeology and our ancestors' remains. So I need to bring this to the table and would like to hear from him how he would see the correlation when it comes to good practices in preserving our ancestors' remains as part of our cultural heritage, I must emphasize, which is particularly on St. Eustatius, the case which is not really happening in that fashion. Another thing which struck me, and I would like to put the question to him, um, is the, the element of education and awareness pertaining to our ancestors' tradition, mythologies, principles, philosophies, and ceremonies, such as Mrs. Um, Dr. Granger pointed out a while ago in relation to art and music. And in that context, when we speak of our ancestors' tradition in relation to what I just spoke of, how do we correlate sustainability in relation to herbal medicine, preservation of food in relation to farming, etc., in relation to our primarily um, traditional African ancestral way of life? Because I think there is a lot to gain in that area. And I would like to add two more aspects, and then I will close it as such. I think we speak about climate change, but we recently are still experienced the new order of the world, which is the pandemic. And as we know, our communities, which are very much in poverty and lacking all forms of um, 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 financial um, um, resources, medical assistance, these are the community which you have been seeing and the people have been hit predominantly where we have during this pandemic. So when we speak about climate change and we look at these new um, manifesting forms of world problems in relation to COVID, how do we actually um, enforce our communities in a way to actually tackle these problems as they continue to persist? Because there would be a new form of pandemic sometime in the future. And finally, pertaining to case, I would like to ask a question which struck me, and this, this, you know, don't get me wrong, but it always struck me, strike me that every time something started, it seemed that St. Eustatius either be the last or in some ways not include. So you spoke about your research right now where you're starting in Sabre and St. Martin. Now, St. Eustatius is just back here. Why not the three islands at the same time? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Let me just briefly talk to say the, 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 the COVID thing, and then I'll leave it up to Case and Jaime, because you asked, I think, two questions to Jaime, and he can, can, can answer these questions. We see the COVID as part of the climate challenges. We don't say climate change, we say climate challenges. It's a challenge which people respond to. And we know that many of these viruses are caused by deforestation or other types of things that, that human meddling. So we do not say there's COVID and there's climate challenges. No, COVID is one of the expressions of the climate challenges, which we will take on board. And I think when uh, Sharelli spoke about the coloniality of disaster, she's recognizing that it's broader than what formerly used to be called, uh, let's say the natural and the cultural. We don't use those terms anymore, but for, uh, for ease, I use them quickly here. Um, climate. Uh, you first and then case. Okay. Well, Mr. Kovale, uh, you have brought <laughs> some very complex uh, issues to the to the table. And yes, uh, 
let me try to answer some of them. Uh, in terms of, of, of our archaeological practices and how we can correlate those practices, uh, uh, you know, with uh, heritage preservation, uh, uh, even sometimes uh, through excavation or, or field work, which is what I what we do sometimes. Well, uh, in, in principle, we have to uh, to say that archaeology as a traditional discipline and the traditional tools of archaeology uh, or methodologies uh, from archaeology are, we have to admit it, are uh, destructive in a sense, in some way. So uh, 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 when we approach uh, archaeological sites uh, and other kind of uh, buried uh, heritage, we have to do it uh, with the, uh, being aware, you know, that there is a, a risk of uh, impacting irreversibly uh, these uh, resources. This is why we have to implement a, a, a many different kind of uh, methods aiming at a uh, collect and, and recover as much information as, as we can. But yes, uh, uh, in other instances, for example, uh, 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 when we deal with some uh, kinds of uh, different heritage for which we have a, a information, a historical information, for example, then in those cases, we have to, to work together with uh, communities, uh, to, with living communities uh, to see if we can together, uh, 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 you know, uh, do research if we want in the if the community wants or uh, or, or simply you know uh, 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 perform dif a different sort or a different way of uh, uh, studying uh, uh, these uh, resources uh, 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 and after that of course we have to look uh, uh, into uh, the better way to uh, uh, preserve uh, those uh, uh, that heritage no, but uh, yeah, in principle, archaeology is destructive and we have to be very cautious. We have to work in concert with uh, uh, local communities that owns that heritage. <clears throat> in terms of uh, education and what we can do, at least in my case, no, from paleoethnobotany, uh, 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 well, I should say that, uh, you know, uh, when we uh, study very ancient uh, archaeological contexts, uh, we, we, we don't have the people who produce those contexts in front of us. So we studied uh, with the culture, material culture that they, uh, uh, that they used for, for producing or, or for making their life. And uh, 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 it's in those cases that we have to build uh, different uh, theoretical and interpretive uh, frameworks aiming at to gain a close, not, we cannot reconstruct the past, but we can make uh, some good approaches to better uh, or to interpret in a better way those past based on different uh, theoretical and methodological approaches. So in those cases, perhaps we cannot say, or we cannot, uh, uh, yeah, we cannot share with people at, in the present uh, 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 information on, on, on the past uh, ways of, 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 inter, of the people interrelated, uh, uh, how people interrelated uh, with plants. But we can uh, 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 unleash the basic data that we, with which uh, we together, we can uh, build a, a new interpretive possibilities and we can learn from that, you know, knowing the different times and places in which plants were used, for example, that will give, you, give us a, 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 a better notions on the ways people in the in the very early past uh, uh, interacted with plants and under different conditions in the islands. So uh, uh, for example, we can identify, yes, we can identify some uh, uh, medicinal plants uh, in, in, in our context of a uh, study. But uh, besides that, we have to work with different frameworks aiming at uh, 
provide uh, the best possible explanation on the potential use or uses of those plants in the past. So in this case, we have to work together with uh, traditional knowledge uh, from the islands and people who owns that traditional low knowledge in order to uh, provide the best interpretation possible of those uh, uh, paths. So uh, uh, what I believe is that we have to work together, uh, at least in this uh, context in which we, I, I am working on, you know, paleoethnobotany, I have to work constantly, uh, work with uh, people uh, surround, uh, surrounding the uh, research and the investigations. Yeah, and so you say many more things, but thank you, I Jaime. Touch everything. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it, the, this was a, an extensive um, answer. Case. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. You are you are right that I've, I've looked at the possibilities at uh, St. Eustatius, but for my type of research, we depend on kind of sedimentary archives where polar and items are well preserved. And St. Eustatius is a very dry island and it misses uh, coastal lagoons like uh, on St. Maarten and the ABC islands. So I've, um, maybe you know Henry Hoogimstra who did uh, some research on St. Eustatius. He also tried to recover polar from uh, also from the from uh, the Kiel volcano in the crater, but it was uh, in unsuccessful. Um, so, but if you know places what maybe they are buried by uh, by uh, erosion material, we can we can always look for them. But at this moment, we uh, yeah we start with uh, yeah, the yeah the best options. But uh, I'm. I'm yeah, would like to uh, discuss with you maybe the possibilities at the uh, Sintestages, but, but uh, then we need three uh, sediments that are well preserved and also underwater. So that's, uh, that's not easy to find, I think. Wait, 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 Mr. Kuvale, I know you want to respond. Uh, okay, it, it would have to be, right. thank yeah, thank no, you. it would have okay. to be very brief and uh, okay. I will be on St. Eustatius in, I believe, in May. Um, so all the islands are, are being uh, treated. There's no way that we are uh, letting St. Eustatius back. Um, St. Eustatius will also receive its fair share of research. Uh, Lisanne will be there. Uh, Sharelli was there briefly. So, and I will be there. So you need not worry about that. Now, I know you want to answer. If you can briefly answer, because I see Andrea Richards also wants to ask a question, so please. No, well, um, my answer and question would be, what, what specifically is the difference between Sabre and St. Eustace? I didn't quite understand your explanation. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, you're right. Well, I will uh, help uh, Jaime on Saba with uh, his type of research, yeah? um, like pilots that are, that are present in, uh, in soils as well. But for my type, I really depend on, uh, on coastal lagoons and lake settings. Yeah, so there's no difference between the two islands. Um, Case is doing primarily St. Martin and he will help Jaime that's, that's doing that kind of research, which uh, Seba, but Stacia would have been just as well, but he has to choose one island he chose. Yeah. Uh, Seba, I will be on St. Eustatius and the more social matters will be uh, addressed uh, there and you already had a very large excavation. Um, so let's go to Andrea. Thank you, Francio. Are you hearing me clearly? You're hearing me, correct? Okay, because I'm not. Oh, because I wasn't hearing anything back. Um, I have a question for um, Lisanne. Um, thank you for the interesting presentation. I just wanted to, to just ask you a question. You indicated that you were going to um, uh, be looking at how traditional knowledge could be incorporated into policy uh, moving forward. 
Um, I wanted to ask you to elaborate a little bit on that um, con within the context of the low priority given by government sometimes to cultural heritage, and also within the context of uh, the, 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 the st government structure that exists within the islands, um, uh, the Dutch islands. Um, uh, how do you plan to approach that work? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thanks, Andrea. So first um, and foremost, I plan to look at the existing policies. So I've already had some pre-discussions with uh, persons um, within government of St. Martin and within the government of Sabah. So looking at the, the existing documents that they already have and seeing actually what they already have in place as it pertains to um, the water, food, shelter, energy nexus, and then in addition to cultural her heritage preservation and then seeing what is also omitted. And in addition to that, like one of my um, secondary questions is actually how the expectations of the communities are also taken up into those policies, um, policy objectives and goals. Uh, so here, then in, in that uh, comparison is to see actually if the community has things that they would like to put uh, forward to government to include in policies, but then also how those communities can get together uh, to make sure that that happens. So actually that, that uh, reverts back to the uh, topic or the title that I picked for my, my research thus far, which is when Islanders uh, led or lead. Um, and that speaks to the idea that actually a lot of these conversations were already on, uh, ongoing and happening on these islands already. And a lot of this preservation was also happening already. Um, and it, it also, when you talk about the second part, looking at the different structures, that's why I actually wanted to uh, look at Sabo, St. Martin, and St. Eustatius, because you have these very different um, governing styles and uh, very different relationships with the Netherlands, which is, I think, um, as Shirali would have uh, mentioned in her presentation, that the colonial legacy um, is something that still has to be mined and delved into, and seeing how that informs and impacts uh, policy development. And also, um, uh, so between the three islands, but then also between the islands and uh, the Netherlands. So I hope that I answered your questions. Um, Thoroughly, but if not, please uh, ask whichever points that I didn't answer, and I will follow up with it. Great, thanks. Are there other questions, people who might have comments or, or things that you uh, would like? Uh, uh, yes, please, Godfrey. Yes. Yes, thank you, Francio. I've been listening very carefully and uh, really impressed by the, the amount of richness coming out of this conversation. I want to start by congratulating all the scholars, young and not so young, on what they are doing in the different islands. I have a couple of uh, recommendations. Um, I'm not expecting a particular reply from anyone, but of course, feel free to respond. One has to do with the presentations themselves. They come across as individual projects, not only in terms of the format, and uh, Francio, thank you for addressing that. The format is so diverse. Each and every presentation has its own format. But even the way that the work seems to be going along, there seems to be hardly, at least this is what comes across, right? There doesn't seem to be a lot of parallel uh, conversations taking place amongst these researchers. Um, I was expecting the presentations, for example, to ask and to raise similar questions some of which would have to do with the methodology that is being used. I think this is very, very crucial. How are you really addressing the issue of science community engagement? How does it work on the ground? You've spoken about communities. You've spoken about immigrants. How do you connect with these different types of publics when you actually visit these islands? I have seen fleetingly references to people visiting two islands in a week. So you're only spending two, three, four days in each of these islands. And what are you actually doing there while you are there? How do you address the, the disconnect, the very deep disconnect that may exist between scientific knowledge and practice and, of course, community knowledge? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Godfrey. These are, these are, are, are good points that we will uh, take on board. Perhaps there are persons who might want to uh, respond immediately. Uh, I will say that it, the, the, the expectation is that researchers stay longer than only a couple of days on the island because they really have to 
ground themselves to understand the dynamics. So if you come a couple of days, you will not understand what's going on. That we recognize for sure. Yeah. Um, are there persons who wish to uh, respond? None, but we will take these things on board because I think they're very important matters. Uh, I see Antonio and then uh, Kenneth, uh, you, will, uh, you will then be able to ask your question. So Antonio first and then Kenneth, yes. So yes, th thank you, Francio. And thank you, Godfrey, for your uh, comments uh, and your suggestions. Um, I think that perhaps, of course, we always take a time into consideration, but uh, perhaps we could have had a, um, um, perhaps a brief review of the work packages. And, and because within the description of the work packages, we see how they connect uh, to, to one another. So how policy connects to all of the issues the, that we are working with. Um, uh, the, the work package one and the archeology, span um, how that, uh, of course, uh, and paleoethnobotany, of course, uh, how that is all also related uh, to, to other issues. Um, what we do try to um, do, or what we actually do uh, every couple of weeks is uh, we have our research, we meet, and we have our researchers uh, uh, talk to each other and engage uh, with uh, one, one another. And I can, as you know, for um, working in work package four uh, on policy, um, <clears throat> but also um, being one of uh, AGA's supervisors, uh, as soon as, uh, as she uh, came into Islanders at the helm, I suggested that she come into direct contact with Lisan, who is working on policies. Um, uh, these, these are very closely related. So indeed, we could have uh, highlighted uh, more of the interconnection uh, amongst these, but perhaps we might want to hear from some of the researchers and how they see um, uh, how their work is uh, interconnected uh, with, with, with other research packages and the whole idea of Islanders at the helm. Fancio, you're, mute. you're muted, Fancio. You're muted. Thank you, Antonio, for clarifying. Sorry. Then I, clarifying these matters, then I have um, uh, Kenneth Kuvale. Yeah, this is more a recommendation in relation to the uh, questions and the recommendation to some point from um, Mr. <laughs> Godfrey um, Balancino. I think I, I started out mentioning and questioning the connection with the grassroots. And I think to some degree, um, Mr. Balancino reference was to that as well. I would like to suggest, because it's a matter of economics in these research as well in relation to um, a project. And um, you cannot be constantly on the islands as scientists for long-term basis. Even if you're here two weeks on the island, with all due respect to everyone, or three weeks, or a month for that matter, you still wouldn't grasp the disconnect of the community or even coming together with the community. So I would like to suggest that there should be some form of financial funding fine so that you can install local working groups on the island, whether or not you're on the island, that these local groups can bring the information and the happening to you as scientists on the ground still. I think this is very important because I have a big problem with scientific research which are coming out constantly, especially in the Dutch Caribbean, and in essence, lacking the greater input of the greater part of the community from a grassroots level. And I need to constantly emphasize on that, especially coming from the Dutch side. Thank you very much. Your points are well taken um, and, and we consider recommendations. So we will uh, look at these recommendations seriously um, and they will not be there for two weeks. They will be there for months, six months at least. Every year I will be on the, in the Caribbean for six months. Uh, so not two weeks, six months I'll be there um, uh, trying to understand things. And many of the researchers will be there for longer pairs like Lisanne or Harold. Um, they might come to the Netherlands for a month or two months, but <laughs> we'll be in the Caribbean most of the time. But, but your points are taken about, um, um, about um, taking seriously the other ways of knowing, 
next to the scientific way of knowing. That point is, is well taken and, and, and we, we, we appreciate that. Are there um, other comments? Because we have a full house and perhaps there are persons who would like to uh, say something. There are some um, PIs and promoters of researchers here as well. Don't be bashful, as they say, just <laughs> speak your mind. <laughs> well, per perhaps I can, uh, as a, a promoter of uh, Lisan and uh, Aga, I can uh, emphasize uh, the, the, the relevance of these stakeholder meetings and uh, yeah, wishing uh, they, they will be more in person as well on the islands. Uh, and, and that is also the reason why we have our uh, researchers as much as possible uh, based on the islands for as long as possible during the research uh, and indeed emphasizing the interconnectedness within uh, between the researchers and uh, our uh, uh, PhD <coughs> students for example are now in the starting phase of their uh, research and one of the things that we address is especially uh, the focus uh, areas and the, the yeah the focusing of the research and there we try to create as much synergies as possible. So as for example, to engage as much people as possible on the islands, on the islands and also had to make use of each other's connections and networks that we are creating. Thank you about that. Um, others, we have, we have about Yes, Noor, good to see you, please. Yes, uh, hello to everybody. I'm from Canada, but originally from Sri Lanka. And my great grandparents came from Indonesia with the Dutch army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one of my personal experiences is what I want to relate to you about ar archeological diggings. I used to fly across Sri Lanka very, very often from the East Coast to the West Coast. And there were many, many huge tanks built by the ancient kings of Sri Lanka. And during the rainy season, they got filled up. And during the dry season, they dried up. So the government thought very wisely that she would divert the main river, which is the Mahavali Ganga, uh, to fill these tanks up. And lo and behold, through scientific methods, when they dug up to connect the river to the tanks, many tanks in the lowland, they found the whole archaeological uh, canals and anicuts and all the diversion paraphernalia intact under the soil. A further um, study into this matter, why it got filtered up was Firstly, due to the British neglecting the uh, waterways. And secondly, because the British planted, had huge tree, pl uh, tea plantations planted on the hillsides, deforesting all the uh, hillocks and hills in the central province of Sri Lanka. And there you can see how the ancient kings thought about all this long before the scientific methods came into place. And that's about it. Incidentally, I'm just a layman and these are my observations. And there's a long, long story about weather too, which I'd like to relate if time permits and if you permit. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Noor. Um, and I think Harold and Jaime in case are looking at these um, extra modern ways of knowing um, and, and techniques that, that people had um, um, or still sometimes practice uh, in, uh, in, or there are traces of these practices, let's put it this way. Um, I saw that Shareli Emanuelson wanted to ask something. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. No. Rather asking. I think. I. I guess. I want to go back to what I. What I mentioned in the beginning and this idea of brick by brick, right? Um, um, if I can speak for myself and if I dare to mention some of my colleagues' names that I know that, you know, we, we are from the islands again. So that means that when um, I specifically am choosing to do ABC Islands is because there is a, a longer engagement already happening since uh, my early um, childhood um, of going back and forth, of visiting other islands, of visiting family, visiting um, and working as well. And I think that we need to look in, in, in and see these opportunities as, as um, opportunities to building bridges. And, and um, so it's Mr. Kovalei and uh, Godfrey, it's really about, um, yeah, this is a, is a momentum where we can listen to certain concerns that we ought all of us have but also um, propel or, or, or feed or, or um, put seeds in the right um, places um, and um, Gregory I know Lisanne as well they're very much engaged also with the youth and as much as they're shared so this will it, it is with, uh, within us so when we are on these islands are, it's being done throughout. So I just wanted to also emphasize it because it's really important and that it makes a difference, but it cannot happen instantly. But it is not so when we are addressing um, the issue of a few days or a few weeks, it's also among our conversations, like Antonio mentioned, that we address certain things or that we see that there is a need to do things differently, to think differently, to work differently. That is something that I think if I may dare say, we all of us are also wanting that same goal, but it's something that a path that we have to figure out together and that will take time. But um, yeah, for me, I can assure you that we're busy with that. Francia, you're muted. Two questions in the chat. I'm gonna keep my mic on, perhaps that's, that's better. One is of Godfrey, he asked, are researchers facing any particular challenges that they may wish to articulate and discuss? So I leave this up to the uh, eight presenters who some people are already in the field and they might have challenges. Some people are busy with their um, research proposals and so forth. So please feel free. Hi. Just spoke, but I did <laughs> yeah. already uh -huh. um, mention and throw something in. And um, I think one of the main concerns I have is this, um, this expectations that one has of government um, and the role the government should play um, and how and historically how that is being experienced um, as well on each island. Um, so I, th I see that as a, as a particular concern um, not only um, morally, ethically, uh, <laughs> in all <laughs> different different ways. So I'm very upfront about that. Um, um, but I also look at it, or I want to stay in terms of how people experience it, and we'll go, we'll, we'll try to get as much as possible. But that is one of my top ones. Okay. Uh, others. Well, uh, in my case, ah, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> it's brief, it's just a small comment. Uh, uh, at least until now, I haven't had problems, uh, any major problem, uh, but uh, from next Monday, I will start experiencing, you know, in the field work, uh, the things that uh, I should do, no? I, or I should live with, with other people. And uh, from that time, I will, I, I will share with you or oh, what are the problems that I will be confronting? Yeah. Lizanne? Yeah, um, so I'm still busy with my eight month paper, um, but of course I'm on St. Martin um, and I grew up for a long period of my life on St. Martin and uh, uh, of course another long period on St. So for me, um, and of course visiting Stacia 
often with my great aunt when I was younger, etc. For me, actually, what is uh, interesting is is having these conversations now as a part of sort of my academic work when they're actually conversations that I've been having uh, throughout my life, whether it, as an activist or an artist or a politician. Um, so so it, it's really sort of bringing all of these different um, areas of interest um, now sort of into connection with each other and then and and then uh, considering those in relation to the, the stuff that I'm reading, right? So the literature that I'm reading. And for me, that's, it's, it's not necessarily a challenge, but it's definitely something very interesting and, and another way of, of looking at um, conversations and discussions that I've been uh, having with, with many different people in the past. Um, and so I look forward to it, actually, you know. Um, and one of the things is that because I've taken such a random route to, to uh, this PhD project, to, to academia, um, it's, it's, it's interesting now engaging with materials again. Um, and, and I'm finding that challenging, but also a beautiful challenge. So um, I just wanted to share that. Um, I think, you know, uh, sometimes when we talk about other ways of knowing, like I think I actually embody that. Um, and now I'm actually coming to academia from a very different place, maybe than many others um, would have come to it traditionally. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. There was one other question as we're coming to the to rounding up, and that was a question of Marilyn Richardson, who is the director of the EPA, one of the partners in the in the academic platform. And her question is: When is the next stakeholder meeting planned, and what is the frequency? We would like to do this at least four times a year. Um, so the next uh, meeting will be in September. Because uh, then we have things to speak about. People have been uh, doing some work, and then they can, um, then we can discuss it together. Yeah, come so. That's my little daughter. She's telling me to come and eat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Francia, there was a comment about uh, government. Yes, and uh, that's always a tricky one for scientists, isn't it? Um, I think it's also especially complex when we're dealing with pretty small jurisdictions where in a way the contact with government is easy, relatively easy. It's not that hard to meet a minister or a, you know, a representative of the local assembly if they exist. Uh, but at the same time, there are so many interconnections and webbings, et cetera, that things don't necessarily change in the way that you expect them to. So, you know, you need to sow, somebody used the, the analogy of the seed, you need to throw seeds in many different places and don't be surprised if you find that the seeds you throw in what you think is fertile land don't sprout, but those that you throw on rocks uh, might sprout. Yeah, 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 nice one. <laughs> that's a nice analogy. That's, that's correct and I think there, there might be other people who can, can, can speak to this indeed. Um, um, let me just say this quickly, and then I'm going to go to your, your point, because uh, otherwise I'll forget it. There is going to be a public evening on St. Martin in which we're inviting the many persons who are part of the academic platform to come to St. Martin. So people from the IPA, the University of Curaçao, the University, and if the University of Malta wants to be there, Godfrey, you're welcome to, to fly over to St. Martin. I mean, you know, you know the place. So um, uh, that would be, would be nice. Um, I have some experiences with, with governmental, but I think it's it's up to the researchers to perhaps uh, first um, talk about this. So I've um, again had a conversations already with some persons from uh, Sable government and also from St. Martin government. I'm finding it very easy to reach out to both because of course I, I worked within the government on St. Martin and also um, on Sable uh, through an execution agency. Um, and I'm looking forward to have the conversation on Stacia as well. So um, for me thus far, it hasn't proven a challenge, but indeed, um, as you uh, mentioned, there are you know, connections and interconnections. And of course, uh, persons know me in one capacity. So now, you know, it's having conversations in another capacity. And then, you know, um, there's some sensitivities around that, but um, I think it's, it's uh, interesting and something that uh, we're navigating together. Who else would like to 
join in? Um, yes, I had to, the opportunity to also present the two government officials and ministers, um, especially the Minister of Nature in Aruba. And he was really receptive of the research and um, understood the research and also the, the relevance of it. So that was really interesting. Um, also within uh, the Minister of Education, we had a session with him. Uh, there was also an informative session. And it's um, like Mr. Um, Baladacino said that um, you throw seeds everywhere and sometimes the least expected ones are the ones that go and flower. So it's something we take in consideration, but I think um, I'm speaking of Aruba, um, uh, ministers and government officials, especially the ministers are, um, they think they operate more on a short time span um, in between their periods of governance. So I think that's something that um, it has to be taken in consideration and it's something that has to be overcome to get more long-term changes in place. And I think that's a bit of a challenge maybe on all the islands and something that have to see how we can um, have the framework and also the, the, um, the, the, the support of not only the ministers, but also the other governmental um, um, workers that to, to keep on um, carrying the work after the period of the minister is over. Thank you. Thanks. Gregory Richardson, the researcher that did not speak, but he's going to speak now. Yeah. Good uh, afternoon and good evening, everyone. Um, so like uh, Franz already mentioned, or Atiza was mentioned in the, at the beginning of the, <coughs> the meeting, I'll also be um, within shortly, I'll be joining the, the research team and just as a, a general remark, as a, as a response to uh, Mr. Kuvale and, and others as well, um, I think one of the strengths of the, this research project, and even though it's, it's not perfect, I think is the fact that um, it tried, at least tries to engage, let's say, researchers that actually are established on the islands themselves. And uh, in response to, or in, in, in reference to what Sherari spoke about, um, the fact that established here and have a, a, a let's say a, a large network and has been have been working on a on the let's say a foundation on the islands themselves i think it's uh, a plus and that is one of the things also that attracted me to this to this project because just as as many of you i i am as um, was and still i'm critical of much of the research projects are and their approaches and so forth. And so then we go back to the one or two days and so forth. So I definitely agree with you, but I think um, this is a concerted and a conscious effort to try to um, um, deal with this, uh, this challenge and maybe in a more creative way. And the fact that it's multidisciplinary from the, the multiple angles, I think that is also another approach that I think that should be commended. So from that perspective, I, I really think it's a, it's a good initiative. But uh, nevertheless, we should remain uh, critical and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and be careful or be wary of the, the, some of the, the challenges. And plus, not because you are a quote-unquote local researcher doesn't mean that you're actually an insider in, in that sense, because, yeah, I think that is something that we have to be cognizant of as well. So I'll leave it to that. Thank you very much, Gregory. I have, we have taken up. Um, oh, Shareli wants to respond. <laughs> oh, that's a clap. Okay, okay, I, I, yeah. Um, we've taken up much of your time. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for the important comments and thank you for the critical remarks because all of this we consider feedback and uh, um, to improve this, this uh, research program. Thank you, and I hope to see some of you on St. Martin in May and some of you uh, on Zoom uh, in the, um, the stakeholder meeting in um, September, which Emma will uh, send out the email on. Thank you, and well Thank done. Thank you all. Ciao, ciao. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Maritza. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.